Hello, men of Gondor. The White City is under attack. The armies of Mordor and Sauron are here. And all is lost. Or is it? The men of the West have come together and are ready to unite and defeat the armies of darkness. Little do Gondor know, but Theoden, king of Rohan, rides to Minas Tirith's aid and hopes to break the siege lines and get through to the city. What's up guys, welcome back, we're here with some more Dawnless Days siege action for you today and today we do have the siege of Minas Tirith as we already have the orcs landing on the walls over here getting ready to battle away with the armies of Gondor. They're already defending the walls, we have some Hellmen of Landon here defending against the, uh, the orc shock infantry here. Or pillagers, they're going in, and um, that should be a fairly evenly matched fight, I imagine. Medium axe infantry against medium shock. The shock does operate pretty well on the uh, on the walls, so we'll see how that one goes. We also have uh, orc warriors over here landing as well, ready to take on the hillman of Landon. I guess these guys are just hit up here to hold the line, while the Gondor archers do all the hard work. But yes, if you are enjoying Dawnless Days at the moment. And do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new here, and a comment to show you all support as we continue to work towards 9k subs. And you can see hordes of orcs are landing on this wall right now. And yeah, I imagine these guys are going to be uh, marauding off these walls as quickly as possible. There are plenty of Gondor soldiers waiting below. We have, well, 8,000 um, like allied troops. So that's uh, men of Gondor and Rohan here, but uh, mainly Gondor. I can't imagine the Rohan... Add some more than Rohan's army adds some more than like a thousand. And there are well over 13,000 orcs here today. So we'll see how they can do, if they can break through. And it isn't just orcs here today. There is also, waiting in the back, there is an army of Southrons here made up of Haradrim. And we also have the Mummocks as well ready to go in. So they'll be there ready to counter against the armies of Rohan. That uh, obviously, uh, as you've seen in the movie, they do quite a good job killing off the um, the Rohirrim, so we'll see whether they can break that ch uh, break that charge, and um, we'll see for ourselves. But yeah, Rohan uh, has a little bit of time before they arrive, uh, and then there's a little bit of a delay, and then the um, Southrons, the Haradrim, will also arrive. So it's kind of like trying to go like the movies, so the uh, Rohirrim will have a bit of joy against the Orcs, and then they have to take on a much tougher opponent in uh, Harad, and Harad is. Um, they were allowed to build their own rosters, so Harad went with a very anti-cav army. A lot of desert spears, they light spears. Um, we've got a decent amount of cav, javis as well, and obviously the mummocks. It was the only rule that they had to bring mummocks um, to try to keep it, you know, to movie to movie law, I guess. Is that, is that a thing? Movie law, I guess? But yeah, already, as you can see, the fighting on the wall getting a little bit more intense as the orc pillagers land. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how these guys do. Uh, the uh, Helm of Landon. Don't often see them, but um, they are levy, so I imagine they're going to do pretty trash. But yeah, sit back, relax, get yourself some popcorn, and prepare for a glorious siege battle. I'm certainly looking forward to it. I mean, it's all happening really on the walls at the moment. The Orcs are landing across the entire entirety of this wall at the moment. They're also focusing down this Gondor Archer slowly. They've got about nine or so. And um, they are using their Uruk archers, I think, in mass, just to focus one unit down at a time. It's going to take a bit of uh, work, though, because these are very heavy bow infantry of the Gondor archers. So it does take a lot of arrows to kill them. We've got Gondor spears as well waiting at the gate. This will be great. I wonder if we'll get trolls to come through uh, first. And we can have, like, Gandalf's speech, like, You are men of Gondor! Whatever comes through those gates, you will stand your ground. That would be excellent if that happens. It really will be. Um, but yeah, shock infantry over here, actually. Uh, fighting against two units of um, orc pillagers. And yeah, uh, we have Axemen of uh, Loznark here. They're fighting. They're probably one of the worst shock infantry in the game, really. Kind of remind me of uh, Vikings or, Sa or like Saxons, though. So they've got like their shield on their back. They kind of look like a bit of like a house guy. They're fighting in here, and they're losing. I mean, it's a 2v1. I'm expecting no, le no less than that. And another, another unit of the uh, shock infantry, the... Uh, I was about to call them the House Giles, <laughs> but it's the Warriors of Loznog. They've, they've lost on that wall, and now we'll have... Uh, Mordor will be able to jump off the walls, and he'll be able to engage this um, Gondor Sword Infantry. We are using a Minas Tirith map. It's in the early days of Minas Tirith, it's called. It's a much better map than the actual complete Minas Tirith, because it's got larger gaps down here. 
and just better as well, like um, second and third tiers. Um, it doesn't obviously look like movie lore, but it, it's a more practical working map, which is what I prefer to have than like an actual um, like look look like one. Um, just for the orc's sake, because like. Otherwise, it gets really tough. I mean, it already is, gets tough getting to the second layer because it's a gate. So really, Gondol just has to put one unit in that gate, and then it's it's not over, but it's just tough going for the orcs. Um, they have got plenty of reserves as well back here. Lots of coast guards and uh, like citadel guards and things like that, and founding guards as well. And yeah, I'm, so it's gonna be tough to break through there. But it is a very very close siege battle. I will reassure you guys. Do not worry. So yeah, it's gonna be a very very good one to sit back and watch. I, I definitely would recommend it. But yeah, well, as you can see, an orc a single orc pillager is dead, come off the wall. I don't know what's happened to the rest of his unit, but he's just chilling there. He's like, yep, don't mind me. Just gonna just gonna sit here. And these uh, Gondorians are like, yeah, that's fine. We did do this on a stream uh, a few weeks ago. Um, so some of you may have seen uh, bits of it. But I thought, you know what? It was such a good siege battle, we had to show it off. For those of you that didn't watch the stream. Gondor Swords now clashing down here with all pillagers. I can't imagine the pillagers will break through this unit. They're not as healthy while well, the Gondorians are. And also, uh, well, the Gondorian Sword Infantry is just better. It's heavy, very heavy against mediums. They should, should stand their ground. But yeah, Mordor's already off the walls. Not a good sign for Gondor here. Uh, what else have we got? I mean, yeah, what's Lost Nugget? Whether they rallied or they've just been beaten? Um, I think they've actually won the fight, maybe, there. They, they seem like they killed a lot of orcs. See a lot of orc corpses. So maybe they did win that fight. Or maybe they just disengaged. We have Orc Rabble, by the way. They are bringing up a ram. It's Grond. Shame it's not Grond itself. Like, we have a Grond. Um, like, the big ram, the big boar head. Um, or wolf head, isn't it? Um, ram. It'd be a shame we don't have, like, a unique model. That would be really cool if we did. But yes, Grond, Grond, that's what they chant as they go into a battle with it. it. Looks like the orcs getting off the walls in a few other places, so it seems like the walls might be lost already to Gondor. So maybe it's time to start the street fighting already. Um, if I was the orcs, I'd maybe potentially get archers onto the wall if you could. Uh, maybe that would help with shooting down into the Ringlow Vale, men at arms and various other units. Over here, the Mordor's not even had to have a fight. Um, they're just up here and there's actually some Rohir and Barrel um, barrel men just chilling they're like oh god if we don't move they won't see us that might be the uh, the policy they're going with um, Rohan yet still move obviously I think they've got um, they moving at like uh, 45 minutes or something left in the replay so we'll keep an eye on them um, I was playing as them I I'm not the greatest of Cav commanders but we'll see how I do you can see the captain of captain of Gondor here he's just chilling Killing as many of these orcs as he can. He's like, die, orc scum. Damn you and your master. Don't give ground, sir. Don't give ground, you coward. Fighting the front lines like a man. More archer fire coming in. Trying to kill these uh, orc pillagers off. Doing a really good job. Yeah, Gondor was making sure they resupplied all their ammunition as well for their archers. Made sure they had lots of supply barrels ready to go. And uh, yeah, they, they've been resupplying archers non-stop really. Um, certainly help these archers over here focus down shock infantry and other nasty units. This was something I wasn't really a fan of. Um, that like, I don't even think Rohan's moved yet. Yeah, Rohan has not moved. So it's like the sense that they're still marching towards the front lines. But yeah, Mordor is making a solid line of spears and pole arms here. Um, which was just a bit crappy. Like, do this just as Rohan charges, like in the movies. Not Don't set up like you know that it's coming. It's the problem with doing this and also Helm's Deep. Um, like these two scenarios because everyone knows the reinforcements are on the way they, everyone's watched the movies everyone knows what happens so yeah the mortal players just so they feel safe and feel like they can then stand a chance against all the cav because yeah they have no cav or they have like trolls to counter them and a, some generals they have a couple of nazgul and the uh and i think they have the witch king here as well yeah um apart from that they have no cavalry capability which is kind of the idea though um so yeah so they, they made a line of pole arms and spears to stop them being charged on the side which annoyed me, but at the same time, I was kind of like, well, I'll charge them anyway. I'll, because, well, I'll charge the spears at least. Um, and it also, it helped Gondor out. Like, they've got less troops now to actually fight on the walls and in the, um, in the city. So I was like, yeah, you know what? If I, if I have to sacrifice my army, but it means that 
Gondor has the, the, more time to just deal piece by piece the Mordor army. I was fine with that. You see that right now, I mean, though they are like off the walls, the Ringlow Vales are beating these pillagers down here, so they're doing a good job. And yeah, on mass now, we're seeing lots of orcs come off the walls and they are getting ready to take on that Ringlow Vale. And they've set up nicely because they can actually use these archers here to just shoot over the side and just get some really nice flanking shots. So we'll see how that does. But yes, I imagine Thaden right about now, we're probably at that point where uh, Thaden is probably doing his speech. He's like, a uh, shield will be shaken. Or oh, isn't it? Uh, spears will be splintered. This is a sword day. And the sun is rising. I should should really do the whole speech, but I, I, it's quite a long thing. I'm not going to do that. And these all start shouting, death! Death! But yes, it's, it's, a, it's a glorious sight. Um, shame we couldn't have more of here, I guess. We could have even more, but this is like a full... Like as many cab as I could bring. Uh, and I try to make sure I could bring a lot of like mid-tier stuff because the like, Ryder Rohan are pretty decent. They are heavy shock cab. They'll burst through those lines. If they get a good charge off. We have also got some good like um just got some melee cab as well out of the Westfold to try and deal with the Um with the Witch King. And there you go, they are off. So the Riders of Rohan have been activated. We've got Knights of the Mark as well, and we also have some um Aired of these folds, some more cheap stuff. And we have got Knights of the House of Earl as well, so we've got some some heavy hitters as well in there. As well, so yeah, I am looking forward to see how this happens. You can see the archers are running for their lives. They're like, "Oh God, we overcommitted. Get back behind the spear line." But yeah, the uh, Uruk spears are now setting up, and this is what I was saying. Like, I mean, they actually kind of like did un like they they undid their formation, but already look at this. They're already getting ready. It's insane. Look at this dashing. So many spears dashing to try and I guess form a solid line all the way up to the south runs. I don't think they'll be able to do it. Trying to just block off. The, uh, the Rohirrim. Just a shame that they're doing it, but, um, yeah. If we were to do Buck, um, one, by the way, we'd have, like, another army over on this side, and that would be the Gondorian, uh, reinforcement army that, like, Aragorn brings for, like, Pelagir and various other sieges that they help lift. Um, I think they lifted those with the army of the dead, and then, and they brought the garrisons from those various different places here, because at this time, actually, yeah, Minas Tirith was one of, like, three, uh, places being besieged, like, Ker Andros, Pelagir, we were all under siege. I think Dol Amroth as well, maybe. I can't remember if that one was. But yeah, we're about to see a bit of a charge here, I think. Here we go. Knights House of Earl. Oh, no. Knights of the Mark being given the order. And they're going to go in. Problem is that we don't want to get too close because the archers will start to focus down the cab. But yeah, I think the cab's just going to go slamming on in. These Uruk Spears. Well, I actually, they do know what's hit them. They've been set up for a long time waiting for this cab. But here we go. It's not really what I'd advise. Cab going into Spears. But you know what? It did the job, actually. We did a lot of damage to this, killing about 40 men. It is going to do severe damage to the cab, though, as it comes out. That is the risk. That's why you don't really do it. Yeah, we killed, like, 50-plus in that charge there. It was an incredible charge. I'll give them that. But, yeah, you do take a lot of casualties on the way out. It took, like, 10 units uh, of casualties there. So I really need to recycle my charges, do another charge. And you can see I'm now getting double stacked with spears. It's incredible. This is ridiculous. I've got, like, a whole army already over here facing off my cav. Um, so I was like, screw it. I'm just going to go around them. I'm not going to charge head on. Um, and yeah, I'm going to have to sacrifice one unit to deal with the Witch King here. Riders of Rohan get given that job. They're going to charge in. They might get the charge off on him. No, it looks like it's not really. And there you go. Pin down the Witch King. This Rider of Rohan has no chance of winning. It's fine. It's slowing down a cav unit and also these trolls. And then I'll be able to get in behind. And there's an artillery piece up here I really want to get. An onager. And then just get the archers as well. They're the other big key thing. Kill those. And the pole arms over here have nothing to worry about. Um, because, yeah, we can deal We can deal with um, we can deal with their pole arms. The trolls we also need to kill. But cow is terrible at killing trolls. That is not, not my job. But, yeah, we're nearly through the spear line already um, with the Knights of the Market. But we're taking a lot of casualties with each charge. Yeah. And there you go. Actually, we did break them. That's a bit of a win. And now if we can hit the sword... Then we're into the squishy uh, underbelly of the orc army. Once we kill the spears off, the swords are a lot easier to kill. In we go. Charge them down, boys. For Rohan. For the kingdom of men. And there you go. That did a pretty decent damage as well. Like, that's killed like 50 men. And it's already wavering the orcs. Yeah, I mean, this is like double stack spears. Not really a good use of... Uh, Cab, but the area of these fold, they need to do something. We need to tie down spears in some way or another. 
Yeah, that's probably going to kill a lot of air out of these souls, in fact. It's sad to see, but unfortunately, it's kind of like just for scenario. You've got to do it, and I've got to tie stuff down. It's better than just charging to the pole arms. That would be even worse. But again, I'm having to tie down more cavalry to slow down trolls. The rest of my cavalry can still get in behind. Nazgul also being tied down, but I'm, yeah, I'm going after, like, Bow Rabble over here. Kill them, and then get in as well for these onagers here. Got to kill as much as possible. Uh, if we get the onagers, then again, another threat uh, for the defenders is gone. And that's what I'm... My objective has now become, I'm not expecting to actually survive long enough to face the Southrons. Um, I'm like, if I kill all the very, like, important things that the Orcs need, then we can we can hold inside the Minas Tirith. And that defeat. is the plan. Who's over here? we got Erid of the Westfold. They're fighting off against, yeah, so the eye. They're having a rough time down there in their red uniforms. They'll be covered soon in the blood of maybe... So into the eye and also themselves. Yeah. It's not looking great again. I mean, to be fair, actually, didn't get a bad charge off on these Morgul Legion. This was a surprising win, to be fair. This Morgul Legion didn't quite get his pikes down in time. Um, this was a risky thing. Still, again, would not recommend. We lost, like, 10 riders. Um, but I actually killed, like, 80 Morgul Legion in one charge there. It was a really good charge. Um, and now I th think I'm getting... I don't know what's happening here. Area of the Westfold kind of got into melee. I'm not really sure what's happened there. Yeah, don't think I meant to charge in there, but I have. That was that might have been a misclick, this one here. Definitely don't do that one, but yeah, the trolls are now swooping on me. Again, I'm kind of using the melee cap just to slow stuff down so my cav can just get in behind, do as much ca carnage as possible. That is the aim. Again, now I have the elites coming up. I have the knights of the House of Earl. They're going in. They're going in after Uruk Throng. There's archers over here as well. We have Theoden over here. He's also charging in. And I was getting pissed at this point. Because this Witch King refusing to die. I put a solid charge. Theoden's in there now fighting the Witch King. Like in the movies. Yeah. Theoden's down here fighting. And like, this unit's still winning decisively. Understandable. It's beating the riders here. But I charged into this unit. Barely killed a man. Like, that is ridiculous. Um, the Sons of the Eye are just so strong. Now we have the uh, the Knights House of Earl. They're going into the archers down here. Causing as much havoc as possible. And they're going to try and kill... Yeah, try and kill these guys off. At least weaken the archers. They've nearly used all their ammo, in fairness. So, they're not really top priority. But yeah, just keep bouncing in and out of units. As well, the Cav here. Just, yeah, charging into swords. Uh, going into more archers over here. we just got to kill as many of these guys as possible. Or well, at least just weaken them. Got to get some kills for these guys. These knights of the House of Earl, they've got to... They've got to eat. And my god, are they eating when they're killing these archers. Keep bouncing in and out of these units. Again, the swords here trying to pin us down. And this one is probably dead, to be honest. It's getting sandwiched between sword units. It's difficult pulling out of that combat. Can't really do it now. Might need to just tie down the swords as much as possible. Sadly. And there you go. I think that Knights of the House of Hill might have been wasted a little bit. But we're doing our best. We're doing our utmost best. Um, it, it was tough, to be honest. I don't really like that they prepared so much for my charge. Personally, feel like they've kind of uh, weakened it. But at the same time, there's a lot of units that I did just kind of wipe out. I wiped out a couple of spear units, a couple of sword units. Archers are uh, radically weakened. And I'm still trying to get this artillery piece here. You can see we've got a Riders of Rohan going in. If it gets a good charge off here onto the catapult, it could route them. In they go. So we did manage to get to the artillery piece as well. And that was the main the main win. We're trying to get to them. You can see the trolls desperately running over. Guards of the teeth as well. The artillery crew is off. They've lost a couple of them. But yeah, they, they're going to get out of there. The, uh, the trolls are coming for me. So I was like, right, get these archers instead. These damn archers, they just keep being a problem. And in go the Riders. And there you go. Riders around. I mean, did an okay job. Again, that archer unit might break, but I'm not sure. And we got a fair few orc bow rabble, which, though it's bow rabble, archers generally are just pretty good because, like, missile block now is a is non-existent for things like pole arms. So every archer unit we kill off, let's help save our Farren guard a little bit. Gondor, by the way, is firing on desperately down here. He's taking on hordes of orcs. We are firing in a few volleys. I've actually, they've used a lot of ammo of killing these uh, these orcs. As you can see all the bodies where they've started. 
And now where they've come to, like, they've killed a lot of orcs, in fact. Um, the Cav, unfortunately, yeah, is nearly all gone. The Southrons aren't really going to be needed to take on uh, Gondor. They, um, sorry, take on uh, Rohan. Um, I was actually kind of was like, wow. Um, I, we kind of had intel on what the Southron army was. We couldn't actually fully see it until Rohan got right on top of, uh, like, went to flank round. Look how many dead horses are running away. Quite funny. But we had had intel um, from the player who was playing them that they were going to go quite heavy, like anti Rohan, which is fine. Um, but then we were like, well, if they've killed off Rohan and they all they have to do now is assault the city, that's going to put them in a real bad spot. Like, spears attacking a city and they're light spears. They're going to have a tough time breaking through. So we were like, really? Mordor should have just delayed? Like Roham, it's kind of hard to obviously with being a cavalry unit or like cavalry army. It's hard to, and you don't have the cavalry yourself. Hard to delay them. But we're like, they should have delayed and waited until Harad um, could have. There you go. Theoden has fallen. Unfortunately, he also fell to the Witch King. How apt. Just like in the movies. But yeah, we were like, well, actually, you know what? Look at this. Rohan's dead, and the Southrons can't even like move. They've just started moving now. Just as Theoden fell. So yeah, they. Mordor needed to slow down. Rohan didn't need to, like, fully kill them. But, yeah, they've done a good job. And, I mean, let's look at the numbers that are left. 5,000 versus 7,000. And that's in favor of, uh, of Mordor. Balance power is still way in favor of Mordor as well. And they are breaking, or trying to break through the uh, the gate now as the spears go in. Let's just try and get a better angle. As we fight with that pole there. As you can see, the orcs are trying to get their own share of the man flesh. Alright, have we got Olokai arriving? There are some Olokai now moving forward. These guys have been murdering Rohirrim. And now they can uh, go in and they can try and break through the Gondorian lines. And they're going to be what's going to break through um, these blocks of Gondorian sword infantry and spears down here. Archers are firing vigorously trying to hit these uh, Olokai. Trying to kill at least a couple of them. They've already got some chevrons. I think that's from... Uh, well, they've already, like, they didn't earn them. They've just been given them. But yeah, the fighting, intense fighting going on there. Seems like they've uh, had broken off the wall a little bit as well. Orc warriors down here. Looks like they've vaguely bro broken off the wall, but it's hard to say. It's still pinned, pinned to it. Gondor is throwing in a lot of troops here. But yeah, if you want to get involved in some of these scenarios that we do on the channel... Feel free to join my Discord. The link's down below in the description. It's a great place to come and, like, just chat Total War or send in your own replays or come and take part in some battles as well. If you're struggling to get, like, games with Dawn of Stays or any Total War, feel free to come join and get involved in the fun. Like, the vet like veterans are welcome or, like, newbie newbies to, like, Total War. Everyone is welcome. Yeah, Gondor holding here against a lot of orcs, and they've still got some more to come in. They've still got, like, fresh orc, well, fairly fresh orc pillagers over here. They're cheering away. They're loving life. Yeah, Gondor here. I mean, they've got orc, uh, sorry, they've got um, Gondor archers and Gondor spears in there. Just against a bunch of orc warriors, which aren't that great, to be honest. They're just there for the mass. 
as most of uh, Mordor's armies are. As you can see, we've got the Haradrim now arriving. They've got Muhad hunters. We have got some Aduna Nakori, though. There's some pretty nasty shark infantry, the Black Numenorians. They'll be wanting to get some revenge on Gondor, who also claimed to have Numenorian blood running through their veins. Yeah, look at all this cav ready and waiting. This is not going to be able to do anything because, uh, well, Rohan's been killed off. So, yeah, not much they can do there. Um, unfortunately for them. So lots of guards of the teeth, though, to come up. And they will be a good uh, unit to have while fighting through these breach points here. And Mordor has captured the gates, in fact. So I don't know really what that's going to do, whether that puts... Now, these, these fort towers aren't owned by anyone. So they're not doing anything to help any either side. So Mordor holding the gates doesn't really do it do anything because I don't think oil's been dropping. It looks like maybe they're retreating some orcs to allow the trolls through. I don't know. We have got more orcs so breaking through over here. They are losing, but Gondor is kind of having his flag turned. Oh, he needs to be careful. He's just pulled through. Oh, he is pulling through. Or maybe not. Maybe he's just re. I don't know. Maybe he gave a, a different attack order. I don't know. Fight on, men of Gondor. Fight for your lives, your families. Make sure you don't become a meal to the orcs. Yeah, it looks like these guys, these orcs are going to get defeated easy enough. There's so many Gondorians down there, actually. Looks like as well they're going to retreat their swords and they're going to send the shock, which isn't a bad move taking on Gondor's spear infantry. They're also shooting um, these units in the back now with the orc archers. Good use of the archers. Try and get some rear shots. That will help break through these guys. But uh, yeah, here we go. I think we're about to see Orc pillagers go in. And they might have a bit more joy against the uh, the spears. Because the shock infantry does excel against spears. But we'll see. And now we have some, uh, some archer fire coming in. So it seems like Gondor was having none of it. He's like, yeah, you know what? I'm, I can't have you... Sh uh, Charging down my spears. Better shoot you in the back. Looks like as well. We finally have Haradrim arriving in the uh, city here. Desert spears. Look at these guys. Cheering on like, yes, we made it into Minas Tirith. Now what? We had hunters as well, which for some reason are just sat on the top of the tower. What are you doing, guys? Come on. Get on. Maybe it's pathfinding. Might be a bit of an issue. I'm really not sure. Still fighting around these, like, stalls here are the uh, Gondorians. They've really not that, like, moved at all. A good play by the uh, Haradrim over here. They're going to land javies on the wall and then they can then help support the fights down here. They can just start javying all these Gondor sword infantry. It's hard to kill them off. It looks like we're also going to have a spear unit go up there as well. Cid uh, sorry, not Cid Guard. Um, Gondor spear infantry. They're going to go up and they're going to maybe try and kill the desert spears and I guess and go on to the, uh, the Muhad hunters. Looks like these spearmen here are about to rout the uh, the Uruk throng, which is good because, uh, well, there's plenty more enemies on their way. We have the desert spears now moving up. They're going to be uh, be going up. And even worse, we have the Adun Nakori here. They are going in very shortly, and they probably do have the ability that they can rip through that spear line if they need to. We also have uh, the trolls. They look like they're breaking through now. Do we have uh, guards of the teeth in there? Or is it still Morgul Legion? It's still Morgul Legion in there, so... They're struggling to break through, but the Gondorians can bank those Rohirrim. They smash through that Morgul Legion line like it was made of paper. Yeah, it looks like the trolls are nearly through. I mean, they're beating these uh, these spearmen. Slap them about, boys. 
These Gondorians are nothing to you. Yeah, those trolls, yeah, I mean, this guy's, like, surrounded down here. Look at him, he's surrounded by Gondorians. None of them want to fight him, though. It'd be a brave Gondorian to take on an Orkai, that's for sure. Uh, seems like Gondor over here has cleaned up every single uh, one of the Orc scum that remain down here. They have done a good job. We now have Guards of the Teeth landing on the wall. An interesting move here, because, um, yeah, Paul Arms is going to struggle then coming off the wall. Uh, fighting in a phalanx formation. So yeah, that's an interesting move there by the Morgul, uh, by the Morgul, by the Mordor player. We then have, uh, yeah, the Orc Warriors and uh, some of the Orc Pillagers nearly broken through this spear line. If they should do so, then, uh, I mean, there's another line of infantry waiting. Look at this. <laughs> Gondor's swords are ready to go. So yeah, Gondor is uh, well prepared, really. They're, they're not letting this choke point be given up so easily just yet. They want to defend it so that these other units can carry on fighting at the walls for as long as possible. Because uh, this defense has held for a long time. So Gondor's, yeah, just standing here taking taking the fight to the orcs. Looks like uh, Gondor's sword, though, infantry over here, they're getting jabbed at by Muhar hunters, which is the worry that uh, I was mentioning earlier for the Gondor players on this side. They could get jabbed to pieces quite nastily. I mean, these are huge javelins that have been thrown in here. Seriously are. Huge things. And they're hitting these Gondor swords. And they're already down like 30 troops. So yeah, they, they uh, are going to need some intervention of those uh, so those javelins. I think we've got Gondor swords going onto the wall. Um, whether they were just there to deal with the uh, desert spears, I don't know. And it looks like uh, Muhad hunters, yeah, they're going to get into the choke point. This... Choke point here might turn in favor now of the attackers. With the support of the javelins, yeah, Gondor's going to have a tough time holding this choke point. They're fighting on. What is the... Uh, yeah, look at that. Losing decisively now. That's all because of javelins coming in. That is... Yeah, that is actually ridiculous. Hopefully those javies just keep that up. Um, Spears here still losing. The problems are for the attackers. Trolls have lost one troll, and that is it. I think it is the bold one that pushed a bit too far into enemy lines. He got stabbed up eventually. He needs to put some archer fire into these trolls to try and support this fight. And it also seems like there's a spear that's broken through. Yeah, there's a bit of a gap there. They can definitely get through there, and Gondor's spears are waiting. Whether they're going to throw them in or whether they're just going to cut off. Everything left of here now. It is looking a little dicey over here for Gondor. But they've got some healthy infantry just waiting here patiently. Um, they need got these spears and these swords here. They either need to get them to the gate to try and support there. Or they maybe need to, um, to get them to these choke points to try and hold them a little longer. Archer fire coming in. They're trying to hit these uh, Muhad hunters. Not a bad idea, but they're nearly out of ammo. I don't know if it's really worth hitting them. Yeah, the angle they have right now down there. Incredible angle. It really is. Archers are the ones holding the line now for Gondor as well here. They're definitely not going to be able to stop the Orc hordes. The Uruk throng. Desperate for the blood of men. Their Dark Lord demands they take the capital of Gondor. At any cost. Orc High Hill, so... Um, breaking through. Or trying to. They we're winning for a moment, but... And not anymore. Pole arms now engaged here against the speed unit that was the new front line. I don't know whether this pole arm will be able to do much. It is a pretty weakened one. We also seen pole arms on the wall here. How they're going to get off, I don't know. There's not exactly any spots to get off that easily over at the gate. And we've got swords as well moving up. Yeah, Gondor was kind of like scrambling for troops a little bit on that flank there. On this side, though, they're still holding strong. Gondor swords are winning decisively. Or not winning decisively. Slightly, in fact. A slight win. Nothing major. The Orc Warriors are wavering. Got Orc Rabble as well in there. It's getting a bit desperate seeing the Orc Rabble being sent in. Yeah, they're actually sending in quite a few of them. That unit's pretty weak, but it's still got a third of its force left. Shows how big an Orc Rabble unit can be. 
Yeah, more and more all gravel landing on the walls. Which is the thing that those numbers. 5,000 of those, but I mean, there's actually a considerable amount of Orc Rabble still left. Um, and also, you've got to think there's Desert Spears here as well. They're not great. The reason why Balance Power is probably so far in favor of the um, of the attackers is because they're monsters. These uh, Mummocks over here and the trolls for uh, the attackers are probably the reason why um, Balance Power is so in their favor. We've got a second Olokai, by the way, going in. So they are really chucking in the Olokai right now. We have a Duna Nakori down here as well. Yeah, they are like throwing in the elite. Trying to break through the gate. I mean, they've partly broken through. But they can, like, they need to fully break out, I guess. The trolls are losing down here. One of them is starting to get focused down, which is good to see. We also have pole arms here. Guards of the teeth. They're going to be taking on the uh, gondol spears. Looks like, um, did these Morgul Legion just rout but just stand here? Well, I guess that shows that they've got, uh, you know, hearts of the li hearts of lions. They refuse to really break, even though they like are routing. They'll stand in front of the enemy, defy them. Okay, you can see the pole arms just trying to scythe through these Gondorian troops. Guards of the Teeth are probably going to have no problem with this. I mean, pole arms have the reach over the uh, spearmen, and they these guys are tier four, so they're really, really solid. Looks like we've got a Dune and Corey as well trying to flank around. There is a bit of a gap over here as well where they've uh, where they flanked around. Maybe didn't do it as cleanly as they could have. They can now rear charge all these Gondorians if they wanted to. Which I imagine is what they're going to do. Or rear charge uh, like some spears over here in fact. If they, break, if they break through here then that releases a whole load more infantry. I think we've got guards of the teeth down here and a whole bunch of other orcs and uh, evil men. Yeah, spears are not handling it very well. And yeah, they're going to handle it even worse when the Doom Nakori come in. There they go. Given the order to charge. Now to start slicing and dicing these spearmen. Rip in peace to those guys. And there you go, yeah. I mean, actually, they've gone back to combat even. Funnily enough, when these guys charged in, they went from losing to combat even. So maybe that made the situation better. I don't know. Um, to be fair, archers right now, we've got a billion rangers, I think, up here. Um, and also just, like, basic gondor archers. They're all gonna... They need to be in overtime right now shooting these trolls. There's a lot of trolls down here. It's like half the uh, the number of trolls down here that they're, uh, like the enemy produce... The produce? Uh, have. Really, they need to be taking these guys out. Or even the pole arms, they need to take something out. Really, like, uh, it should be the trolls. The pole arms can be uh, countered by their own pole arms, the Fountain Guard, which are better. Yeah, they need to take those trolls out ASAP. We also have a general down here. It's the Nazgul. One of the Nazgul has been sent in. I think dismounted. It's the only way he could have got there. But we've got Gondor archers going in, and it looks like Gondor swords being pulled back, maybe to rest up. I think it, we are seeing a retreat has been called. Gondor is retreating from the lower layer and we are going to see a uh, defense of the ramp i think next uh, or at least or by at least one unit and there are some spears as well that are being sent to, i guess to try and support somewhere i don't know where they should try and hold the gate just try and stem what comes in through the gate a little bit longer these are doing the quarry i wouldn't decisively but they're also getting shot in the back they are showing off their backs quite nicely to those gondorian archers up on the second layer There you go, Gondor. Spearman getting sliced and diced. I think he's doing the quarry. They might be pulling out of combat, actually. I don't think they like that they're fighting. Um, or getting shot in the back, in fact. I think they're going to go in somewhere else. Maybe try and uh, get out of range of the archers. But there's still plenty of them along here, along here including some javis, which will be very good for the uh, for the trolls. Actually, javis are an excellent anti-troll weapon yep he's uh Adun are catching out some archers easy kills for them really uh, and i wonder whether they were just trying to break through to the sword line over here which to be fair understandable because the swords are winning over here they've just got muhad hunters to kill and they're just a javi unit so the swords should find this fairly easy 
I do like the Muhad Hunters, though. They're one of the most detailed units. I mean, they've got, like, so many cool, like, like face paints and, like, tattoos going on. It looks great. It's an, an excellent-looking unit. It really is. I think here we go. We're going to see another charge. There's a Dunakori have won their fight. Gondor archers are... Uh, dealt with and now we'll see maybe see a rear charge Nazgul over here I think broke it through the gate and they've just rear charged the uh, the spears down there so well done to them breaking through and now here we go Aduna and Akori going into the backs of the swords over here And I imagine this is now going to be... Well, actually, these guys are still winning this uh, slightly. Maybe just because they're killing off routing troops and Muhad hunters. Yeah, the Adun Kori. Well, they're starting to have some effect. They've now gone to combat even. They're not having the greatest effect. Another Adun Kori over here, by the way. These guys are exhausted already. Jeez. It's impressive, isn't it? It also seems like we've got Nazgul in here mopping up all remains of the uh, Gondor infantry. There's been left just to... Its own devices and we already have trolls and uh, pole arms already moving on to the uh, first line of Gondorian swords that are fighting on the slope here on the ramp up to the uh, second layer At this no point, how many men are left? 2,600 against 4,300. Gondor still has a bit of a deficit. So you need to be careful about this. Fight through them, trolls. Kill every last one of them. There you go, gates have fallen. I presume that, I feel like taking the gates already, but maybe they had them recaptured. Um, did Gondor? I don't know. Maybe they did. Lots of cav and uh, like infantry over here, just trying to route these swords. Of Gondor, they're really having to like put a lot of effort in and kill these guys. There you go. Servants of the Eye, I think, uh, maybe go for another recharge, but if not, they might just leave them like that. They are winning, are uh, the uh, Dunakori. They're pretty banged up. Having to shield their other unit here at the uh, bottom of the uh, bottom of some buildings. Doesn't seem like, well, the Amphalas Coastal Levy's definitely gone here, and it seems like now the, the archers have moved along. Dead. Enemy General's dead. Okay, so we have a General dead over here. Nazgul, still with a decent amount of bo uh, bodyguard. I don't know if he has an army left. Um, this mortal player, they were pretty banged up at this point. Um, the only general, obviously, is a healthy army, is Harad. For sure, but... His army, at the same time, is also pretty useless, because it's mainly spears and cavalry. There we go. Urk, Throng, these guys, veterans of multiple battles already in the, uh, in the front lines here. And they're fighting against Gondor soldiers. Gondorians, they're getting cut down, actually. They're, they're not losing yet, but they will still soon, I imagine, because, well, Guards of the Teeth. They're losing decisively, actually. I was expecting these Guards of the Teeth to turn the fight in favor of uh, Mordor, which he sort of is, actually. Maybe both sides are losing, it seems. That's how war works. <laughs> no one comes out a winner. Yeah, the Guards of the Teeth should easily just poke these uh, Gondorian swords to death, really. Here come the Olokai. They, they've got to like, really push through if they want to get to the front lines. And this is a healthy unit. It's got 10 out of 10 trolls. I think the other one's either been focused down to death or it's just retreated because it's uh, so battered up. But there you go. Yeah, that's the final sword unit before they now retreat to the final layer here as we have 
Prince's Coast Guard is the first line of defense. These are the lower tier um, pole arms that Gondor has available to them. And they're also like a Dol Amroth unit. So it's kind of like a really cool unit to have. This is like one of the fiefs of, uh, of Gondor. But yeah, they're a very cool unit. And then what else? We've got ready to go. More Gondorian swords up here. They've still got a decent amount of troops. More Coast Guard. Um, we've got Dillian Arrangers that are starting to unleash some volleys, I think, into the trolls, which is the mass down there. Um, also, the Dillian Rangers are pretty good in melee, so a pretty good hybrid unit. As long as they don't get charged, but they should be fine up here. Um, yeah, there's still Citadel Guard, Founding Guard. The, the Javis, which not an elite unit, but a very, very helpful unit. Yeah, I think this is the final bit of fighting on the lower tier here. This is this Gondorian sword bravely hanging on. So we'll enjoy as they battle on. But hope you guys have been enjoying the video. It's certainly been a fun one, that's for sure. Um, the siege is kind of going like it did in the movies, bar the maybe Rohan's charge. But yeah, Mordor is making pretty good progress up uh, the first layer. They've broken through, which they eventually did do, I guess, in the movies. And now they're fighting on to the second layer. There you go, they've broken through. And now on, onto the second layer when they uh, they attack onto uh, the Gondorian second layer. So I'm gonna just, um, well, I, I don't know. I'm, I might make a cut because I don't know where the Mordor attacks straight away because they've got, I guess they've got to take a gate. So I'll come back to you guys in a moment once the uh, they make their second assault onto uh, the second layer of Minas Tirith. So it didn't take long, and yeah, Mordor was straight on in. They didn't actually slow down at all. They captured the gate, which you can capture from the outside, uh, which kind of makes it a bit better. Uh, makes it easier for the attacks, which I think is necessary as you get further and further up Minas Tirith. But uh, yeah, they have now got the Prince's Coast Guard in here, ready to poke away. They've got the um, guards of the teeth as well, but they can't seem to get their pikes down. They're, certainly their formation's bugging out, and they're being poked to death. Because of it, yeah, they're getting out of there. I think they realize it's a silver chevron unit as well. My gosh. Um, but yeah, it looks like they're going to have to use the remaining archer ammo here. They've got Uruk archers set up. They're going to have to fire into this uh, Prince's Coast Guard here. Try to do some damage to those guys if they can, in fact, break through. We've got Orc Warriors as well. Going in. Everyone just seemed to stop fighting for a second there. That was really weird. And it looks like I think the Orcs are going to... Oh my gosh, these Orcs are getting poked to death. Rip and piece them. Yeah, they're out of range. I guess like all the uh, the fighting just stops. But yeah, they are just about out of range of pole arms. So the, the orcs need another command to go forward. I'm not sure. Oh no, they're routed as well. Oh, that's hilarious. Um, so yeah, now it looks like we're gonna have Muhad hunters go up. They're gonna start jabbing. Don't know how easy they're gonna be able to javy through the orc warriors, if at all. There is Prince's Coast Guard. I guess easily able to jabby. But it looks like the uh, Gondor's going to retreat. And this is something that I said to the to players. I was like, come on, guys. Though I didn't really want these guys to get jabby to death either. I was like, let's just make it a little bit easier on Mordor. We're doing quite well. We have 2,000 men left. They have 3,000. Most of these are our elite now. 2,000 troops left. Um, so it was like, yeah, let's just make it a little bit easier. Let's try and, like, let's let them into, the, uh, into this second layer a little bit. The Muhad Hunters don't have much Javi Yami or anyway. And here we go. An attack from the Gondor Sword Infantry. Looks like they're going to counter charge. Which probably they should. Don't let these guards of teeth get uh, set up. That's what I'd be saying. Because they'll mow you down. Archers really peppering these uh, coast, coast guards here. Also the Javis are doing their bit. But here we go. The fighting continues here. This is probably going to go how it did on the ramp. The guards of teeth are going to just kebab these Gondor swords, pretty simple. And I imagine they'll outmatch the Coast Guards. It just depends sheer mass how many they can take. But 86, that's still a healthy unit. Quite scary, actually. Maybe we shouldn't have let them in. Maybe we should have been mean. Who had hunters here fighting against the spears? Yeah, the Aduna Nakori now in here, trying to slash their way through. I mean, this, that's a pretty banged up unit, but this is 102 out of 110. That's healthy. 
It might deal with the spears. But I don't know how the shock and fury will exactly do it against uh, art um, against artillery. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant to say. Against pole arms, but artillery is coming in. And that was pretty accurate in hitting the same tree twice. But uh, also failing to hit Gondol's sword, like Gondol's line, nearly hitting their own troops, in fact. So, yeah, the artillery, maybe they need to stop drinking uh, whatever orc grog they're drinking and start start sobering up and start hitting some actual targets. That is Gondorian line. It's not the thickest of Gondorian lines to hit from this range. Um, and also, fire ammo is more inaccurate. But it does look better. Yeah, it seems like Gondor doing okay on this side against the Muir Hunters, not so well on this side. Yeah, this Prince's Coast Guard has been focused down and also poked to death. Oh, I can hear artillery again. At least I thought I heard artillery. Maybe I was imagining it. No, they're moving. Yeah, they, they, they definitely ain't firing. But yeah, Nazgul over here as well, I guess, trying to maybe rally his troops, keep them inspired. We've got Desert Spears going in, so yeah, Harad really having to throw him whatever reserves he has. We've got a fresh unit, Princess Coast Guard coming up, and Gondor Archers going in. So throwing in whatever scraps they have now to hold this line. I love the uh, the Dol Amroth officer actually. He looks badass. I don't think I've ever really looked at him properly, but he is actually also getting knocked about a bit. Like, stay fi stay start fighting, dude. <laughs> it's probably for the best. How many more Princess Coast Guard do they have? No more. It's then actually on to Elites next. Um, so yeah, we've got lots of assembled troops back here that have just been patiently waiting. They've been hearing the screams of men and orcs down below and now on their level. Oh my gosh, yeah, they're trying to hit the uh, the big blob of elites. They've yet to hit it, have the artillery, but they need to be careful. They might just hit it. That could change the whole face of this battlefield. And we've got Mummox as well coming out. Oh no, that might be enough to break through. Mummox, I feel like, struggle against pole arms, but... Yeah, I think they get poked to death. So how easy this is going to be, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, the Princess Coast Guard here is going to focus down. Oh my gosh, they, this guy went straight on him. No slowing him down. The Princess Coast Guard are losing. Don't know really how easily. And here we go, more Mummocks going in. With the whole unit this time. Get those javies up here. We need to javy these elephants. I'm probably saving them still for the uh, trolls. Because I'm pretty sure uh, like the Mummocks are... I want to just keep calling them elephants. The Mummocks are pretty good at being countered by pole arms. And uh, yeah, archers are still killing these Princess Coast Guard off. My gosh, yeah, there you go. One Mummock down. More will be dropping soon, I'm sure. Yeah, not before this uh, Princess Coast Guard gets focused down and killed. And then once they break through one line, the attackers, they can just fold onto the other one. Really, they need some more reserves up there. Um, these uh, Athelian Rangers also probably want to think about moving or shooting. Or both. Early enough, they can shoot and move. Oh my gosh, here he comes. Damn Mummock. Looks like they're going to retreat their uh, Thillian Rangers or maybe just shift them to the other side. Mummocks are fine if they pull through. They are an elephant unit after all. Uh, it's like chariots. I'd say they can pull through. They have literally like the mass of an elephant. And they just, yeah, they're pulling through the spears. It's fine. It looks like they're going to also ignore the Athelian Rangers. And it looks like they might be going straight for the uh, Athelian Rangers that have ammo left, which is not a bad idea. Get rid of archers with ammo. Very, very important. Okay, here you go. Spears are losing just horrendously. Get out of the way, boys! The Mummocks are coming. There you go. That flank's been lost as well, and uh, it's not looking good. Balance power, 1,300 against 3,000. Not looking good at all. They were all elves. I'd be like, yeah, they got a chance. It's Gondor though. Gondor can be a bit, a bit dicey. And these uh, Athelian Rangers kind of been left. I don't know if the players AFK or something at this point. We just let these Athelian Rangers just get run down by uh, elephants or by Mummakill. Even worse. 
Looks like we've got the remaining of Harad's army coming in as well. Desert Spears com coming in along with all the Cav, which is Harajim Lancers and Serpent Guards. They're all rushing him. And it looks like, I mean, are, are the elephants, uh, see, I really want to call them elephants. I don't know why. They, I mean, they are the size of elephants at this point. They're not quite mummock size. That's why they're called baby mummocks. But, uh, yeah, they, they've slowed down these rangers, I guess, to allow the infantry to catch up to them and kill them. I don't know what the plan was. But, yeah, here we go. We've got Bounding Guard moving up. We've got Javis. I imagine Citadel Guard as well. And they're going to have to stop these mummocks in their tracks. They might have broken through the Prince's Coast Guard line, but this is Founding Guard, and they don't have Archer support. In they go. Poke em boys, poke... Oh my gosh, they died instantly. That's actually excellent. Look at that, the Founding Guard. The killers of elephants. Oh, there's javelins as well going in. Oh yeah, that unit has been absolutely wiped out. That's a great combo for mummocks, javelins, and pole arms. So we also have a spear unit going in. They're also pretty good at killing uh, elephants. So yeah, it's like the triple entente of how to kill elephants. Or mummocks. Other one is still doing okay. Still killing off Athelian Rangers. My god, this Athelian Rangers finds the last man. That's insane. Oh, I say that as he dies. Rip in peace, sir. Rip in peace. And here we go, the second Mummock unit going in. Like it's going to achieve anything different from the first. I mean, it's killed seven men in this formation here as the Mummock unit. Don't think they're going to be uh, breaking through with the second one either. This one's already weakened. It's 18 out of 20. Here we go, Javelin's coming in. Already Mummock's starting to drop. I mean, they're tossing a few around a few Gondorians. It's kind of cool. But, oh, there you go. Another one just drops down with a big thud. Another one gone. Another one bites the dust. And another one down. And another one down. And another one bites the dust. That's what the Gondorians will be shouting as they kill every single last one of these damn mummocks. Got some uh, Athelian Rangers that have managed to pull out of combat and sort of get their way back to enemy li uh, to friendly lines. Well, potentially. The mummocks over here, though, are having other ideas. They're just going to plow through these uh, Athelian Rangers. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. And, yeah, I mean, there's not much time left now. I don't know if uh, Mordor is going to really break through. They've got 3,000 men to try and break through a double line of Citadel Guard and Founding Guard. So I'm going to fast forward it ever so quickly and see if we can uh, we can wrap up this siege and it looks like Gondor is going to hold Minas Tirith for now, but it, a great sacrifice. Like, the entire Rohan army has been sacrificed. Many Gondorian lives as well have been lost as archers still firing desperately. I guess trying to kill some of these founding guard off. Um, but yeah, Gondor has literally like gone from a pretty healthy army of about, I'd say, around 7,000 to about 1,000. The orcs uh, and evil men still have about 3,000 left, so... I mean, they're still doing okay, and they might have broken through, to be honest, if they had the time. Um, these coastal levies here, they really need to start javying off, because there's trolls be here to kill. There are trolls here that need killing. And they're all blobbing up. They're seriously trying to break through. They're having no joy right now. Excellent stuff. That's what we want to see. Kill every last one of these mummocks. Oh my gosh, they all are dead. The thing is now that the enemy uh, like troops can't get to the front lines either. So they're just here like trying to battle their way through the mummock corpses to then try and then fight a citadel guard or a founding guard. It's a bit futile to be honest, with, like the desert spears and uh, orc rabble. Well, uh, look at their perspective from the Gondorians. They just see a wall of trolls. Still pretty scary. Bounce power, by the way, is still not, like, shifted away from, like, being way in favor of Gondor. Oh, sorry, in favor of Mordor. Uh, again, because of the Olokai, I think. So we'll just keep fast-forwarding a little bit. It's just, yeah. it's The battle line is not moving now. It's just Gondor holding here, like, a wall. It's just a solid wall of founding guard, well, just guardsmen of various different varieties. 
Uh, Coastal Levy's coming forward. I think maybe to get a clearer shot on the trolls. I'm not sure. Um, the trolls can try and pull through, but they'll be trying to pull through units that can kill them. It's spears and pole arms. I think this is how they get themselves killed if they do that. But like I said, it can give it a go. It looks like Cavs going in, Harajim, Lancers. Yeah, they're, they're getting desperate now for the attackers. There's also the problem. Like, they had 3,000 troops left. A lot of those will be rabble. They'll have a lot of Cav. Um, and they, I mean, they've got pole arms, which they're met, built for this job. But um, they need archers. They need archers and they need, I don't know, just less Cav, certainly. That's for sure. They had, like, more just normal... Um, Haradrim infantry. I think they might have broken through. But uh, it's hard to say. But obviously Harad was kind of building ready to deal with Roham because they thought they were going to have to. But Mordor did such a great job that they actually killed off Roham before Harad needed to itself. It was one of those weird ones. But uh, yeah, as you can see, they're Founding Guard and a Citadel Guard. They look like they're going to hold the line. Lancers and... Trolls are still, yeah, still trying to battle their way through. The trolls are still trying to battle their way through to the front line. Same with the lancers. Citadel, gu I'm sorry, guards of the teeth losing hit. It's probably because they can't form phalanx with all the mummock uh, corpses around. Like, they've pushed the mummock cor corpses through the Gondor formation now. That's how serious it got. They are killing a fair few of these founding guard, and they're getting exhausted. Um, the javis as well still have, like, half ammo. Still jabbing away at trolls, trying to kill them. It's been brutal, that is for sure. We'll go to the last, like, sort of 20 seconds. It's been a brutal fight, that's for sure. I mean, you can, we can go, uh, like, out here and we can see all the dead that there are from, like, the Rohirrim fights. There's a lot of dead, um, like, cavalry out there, that's for sure. Patches there, I mean, there's been fighting across this entire wall here. Um, between Gondor and also Mordor. And there you go. It's going to end in a draw. Um, but I'm going to call that a victory for Gondor and Rohan. And here are the end results that we have here. So I was playing as Rohan, as I said. Um, I've third in here with very few kills. He took on the Witch King. 392, though, for one of my rides of Rohan. Then we have the Erid of the Eastfall getting 156 kills. Um, 332 kills for the Knights of the Mark here. 200 for another one. 339 and 140 for my knights of the, uh, the House of Earl. So yeah, they've done really, really well. Then we have uh, YT uh, Joshi, you got uh, 317 with one of his Gondor swords, his shock 163, his spears 226, um, his pole arms have a super action, his archers 193 uh, kills, then K Pleb 220, uh, 255, 316, 375 with Gondor swords, and then his uh, Found Guard 263, 102 with the Prince's Coast Guard, archers 279. Then Banana uh, getting 339 kills, 153 kills with his uh, Prince's Coast Guard, 567 kills with the Gondor Swords, 270 with the Ringlow Veil. Then we have Bane playing as one of the Mordor armies, a lot of trolls, 158 was his best troll kill. Guards of the Teeth getting 134 kills, uh, his Witch King getting 113 kills. Then we have Famous Austrian playing as another Mordor army, 150 with the Nazgul. 120 with the Orc Pillagers, 324 with the Guards of the Teeth, 218 with the Uruk Arch is the best of the bunch there. Then we have um, Fjord playing as uh, the Haradrim, 240, uh, 250 kills basically with the Adun and Akori, uh, 239, 150, uh, 165 with the uh, Muhad Hunters there, and yeah, then the Mummox, 116, the best of the, those two. Then we have Bulk playing as the final Mordor army, 288 kills as Olog High, 218 with the Uruk Archers, 411 with the Guards of the Teeth, 130 kills with the Ur Orc Pillagers, 166 with another, his Uruk Throng, 115, and his Orc Warriors actually outscoring them, getting 152 kills, and his Nazgul, 134. But there you go, guys, Minas Tirith has held the White City, will live on for now. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and I'll see you in the next one.